everybody. Welcome to this uh, talk show. My name is Susan Olubumi, and uh, it's such a joy and honor and privilege to be with us today. How are you all doing? I hope you are doing very well. Uh, today I'm excited because I have um, a very wonderful guest in our midst today, and um, his name is uh, Folusho. Um, I'm just going to read a little bio about this guy that we have. It's a privilege to have him in our midst today. And um, if I'm to read his full bio, we are going to be here for like how many days? So I would like to just um, read um, very little about him. Folusho has a background in the financial industry. He is a seasoned financial expert with almost 30 years of experience in various industries and services, including banking and financial services, mining and exploration, wholesale distributions and nonprofit organizations. Wow. His experience spans different aspects of financial management, such as accounting, assets management, financial analysis and forecasts, budgeting, financial controls and decision support. Wow, wow. Folusha is a man of valor, a man of honor and integrity. Those of you that know this guy, you will know that I'm saying the truth. He's a man of few words, but seasoned with great wisdom. He doesn't talk much, but he's a man of great wisdom and extreme intelligence, highly intelligent. He is a man with a great humility and meekness. If you know him, um, he's achieved a lot. God has packed a lot in him, talent-wise, uh, um, ability-wise, achievements. But he's a very humble and meek man. And if you're not careful, you could just, you know, just brush him aside, not knowing, you know, the substance in him. I really uh, admire his, his life of um, humility and, and meekness. And um, but especially he's a man of great faith. I tell you, sometimes when I'm even discouraged myself, this guy holds me up. He just says one or two words and I catch it and I start running with it. So he's a man of faith and most especially a man of God. But having said all that, uh, for those of you who don't know, a lot of you know, he's a man I am happy and proud to call my husband. Felicia, you're welcome to this talk show. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. I'm glad. I'm glad you're happy to be here. There, there seems to be some delayed responses. So sometimes when I hand over to him, uh, for some reason, we tested it just before starting and um, there's a delayed response. So bear with me when I hand over to him and he's slow in responding. It's just some internet or whatever. I don't know what to call it, but we are we are in for a, a great time today. Anyway, just before we move on, I, I want to introduce uh, once more um, this great resource I talk about all the time. This is called Practical Tools for Surviving Hard Times. It's a book that you know, collects all stories of people who have gone through different things in life. And it covers so many topics, divorce, loss of a loved one, mental health issues, sicknesses, and all kinds of things. And, and they share their story with you, the, the stories in this book. But then they, they also give you a roadmap. They tell you what worked for them, what didn't work. And they pray for you and they uh, prophesy on you. And the whole idea is that if you apply their strategies to what you're going through, you are achieve the same result. And so this book is a mentoring guide. It's a book that is very, very um, necessary in the days we live in. I can go on and on about this book, but you need to get a copy. You will not regret it. This book will speak to you like none other. Uh, Felicia, do you have anything to say about this book? Yes, I believe this book is a wonderful resource for anyone. And the beauty of this book is the practical nature of the book we're mm -hmm. talking about real life experiences mm -hmm. not fiction these are things that happen to people and god saw them through and you know sometimes when we feel overwhelmed by our challenges mm -hmm. just knowing what others have gone through something much worse than whatever we are going through gives us some encouragement that if God saw them through, 
he will see us through. So this see is us a through. very wonderful book. Everyone needs to get it and use it. Thank you. Thank you so much for endorsing that. And I'm, I'm privileged and honored and with all gratitude and humility to God, uh, I'm presenting my second book, Strength for the Day. I talked a little about this book uh, last week. This book is a devotional guide. It's an amazing book, not because I'm the author, but because I know the one who inspired me to write it. It's an amazing book. Um, it's a devotional like none other because it has integrated workbook in it. And and, and so when you read it, there is an action, or should I call it a, a, a reflection page? I don't know if you can see it, but maybe when you get your copy. But anyway, for each content that you read, there is um, 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 a reflection page or a meditation page or a workbook page that, that helps you internalize what you just read. It helps you experience God deeper. It asks you different questions that will help you, you know, tap into your inner self and reflect on how you can apply the principles or nuggets that you just read in your life, especially areas of difficulty. It's amazing. This book covers different topics uh like i said i'll just i'll just read it again it has topics on christian leadership on how to deal with topics on how to deal with pain to topics on the mind it has topics on emotional intelligence wow um these are very great topics in the corporate world and it has topics on faith dealing with doubts activating your faith then it has topics on encouragement it has topics on time management wow and building resilience on being persistent it has topics on intimacy with god it has topics on christian and growth. It has topics on living a purposeful life, topics on dealing with mental um, um, wellness, you know. It has topics on a general lifestyle and it ends with a topic on revival. And each topic has seven um how should i put it each topic has seven lessons in it okay so seven different contexts for seven days every week you focus on the topic and throughout that week each day you have you know lessons or content relating to that topic so it's packed full it's packed full you know a lot of people will sell the workbook differently and and the book differently and you pay more but it's already integrated and it's just twenty dollars so go and get your copy these two books are available on on all the online retail stores you can buy them from um Amazon Canada, Amazon US, Amazon UK. It's in uh, Indigo, it's in Chapters, it's in um, Barnes and Nobles, it's in Apple Books, I believe, it's in Goodreads and wherever you can, uh, major online stores where you can purchase books. So get a copy for yourself. And I, in the course of this broadcast, I'm, I'm going to put um, the names of the book in there so that you can look for it or you can just search author's name, Susan um, Olugumi. All right, enough about the books. Today we have a very exciting topic here. Um, let me just see if I can pull up the, the topic that we are going to be talking about. So today we are talking about um, dropping your crutches dropping your crutches and if you just give me a moment there was something i forgot to pull up here i need to find oh my goodness i can't find them oh yep okay all right so today our topic today like i said is dropping your crutches and i just want to start with the definition of crutches okay crutches as you know are things that provide us with stability um things that give provide us with safety things that make us comfortable they are items we depend on they are items that boost our confidence they are things we need to make life flexible to make life easy to provide support and stability and safety and these are all very very good things right uh but today we want to talk about the danger in elevating some of these things above God. And, and that's why we're talking about dropping your crutches. So Felicia and I have identified um, four main areas, four main crutches that we are going to deal with today. And I'm just going to go through very fast because Solution is loaded and he has a lot to say about all this. Now, the four main areas or four main crutches that we carry around is number one, acumen. 
By acumen, I mean our wisdom, our logic, our, our tactics, our intelligence. And then the second one is our abilities. Okay. Um, and for that one, we're talking about our skills, our, our talents, our gifts. The third one is our achievements, you know, the success we've recorded in the past. And then the last one, the fourth one is our assets. Those are our resources, whether it's financial resource or, or human resource, our human capital, uh, the connections we have and, and, and all of that. And so th those four areas, if I will just repeat, uh, our acumen, our abilities, our achievements and our assets. And these things are all good. They are gifts from God. You know, God has made man in a wonderful way and he's endowed us with these great things. But, but today we, we are saying that uh, um, we must be careful that these things don't take God's place in our hearts. We are saying that we must be careful not to be entirely 100% dependent on these things so that God becomes a second nature. We are not really looking onto God anymore, but we are secure in the things that we have, in, in our abilities, in our assets, in our achievements, that we forget uh, to, to elevate God above all of these things. <clears throat> We are saying today that we have to be careful that these things don't become idols. Idols are not just wooden objects you put in your home, but idol can be anything you prioritize before God, anything you value above God, anything that gets your attention above God, anything you depend on above God. And, and so that's that's why we are here today. And, um, and um, before I, I, I move on, I'm just going to uh, say one thing and I'll, I'll pass on to solution. You know, most times when you ask any average man um, if you are dependent on these things, solution, the answer is always, no, no, I depend on God. I'm not depending on these things. But um, one, sometime recently, God began to take us through a journey where we really saw that we were depending on, on all these things. And one question that I, I need to ask you today, like a food for thought is, if God allows the storms of life to shake any of these areas in your life, either to strip you of your assets, all the money you have, you have no investment, you have no credit cards, you have no savings, you have nothing. And God said, just, just trust me, I, I will take care of you. Would you crumble or would you still stand? So think about it, because we are quick to say we don't depend on those things. Suddenly, if God should shake these things in such a way that your achievements, your all your years of education and all the things you've achieved are suddenly snapped away, God forbid, from you like Job, are you going to panic or are you still going to stand unmoved? That is how you will know what really you are dependent on. Or dependent on. So the 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 um, point I'm making today is that it takes God removing all storms of life or whatever, removing any of these areas, and and then you will watch your reaction, and then you will know exactly what you are standing on. Uh, Felicia, I uh, please, I know you have a lot to say, so just chime in here. Oh, thank you very much. So, like you said, crutches are in their own place very good. Mm -hmm. So, a crippled person needs crutches for sports. That's mm -hmm. the only reason they will not crumble to the floor every time they take a step. Mm -hmm. And asking a crippled person to throw away their crutches, if they listen to you, <laughs> they are going to open themselves up to embarrassments because they are going straight That's to the true. floor. That's Nobody true. wants to do that. But mm -hmm. that is in human thinking. Right. When we are dealing with God, God needs us to get to that place of being willing to throw our crutches off if he needs us to do that. Mm. And one thing you mentioned also is that any of these crutches, or all of them, can go at any time. That's true. And that's, that's true. why it is important to hold on to one person who cannot go. That's the true. one person who is more than all of those things combined. The right. one person who can replace tenfold, a millionfold, any and all of those things. It is mm -hmm. more important to hold on to that person than to any of those things. So hmm. that's what I would say about crutches for a start. Hmm. 
Wow, thank you. That's amazing. Just before I write on what you have said, we have three comments here, and I want to take time and acknowledge um, <clears throat> every everyone here i have a personal message from yemi see here to you say felicia it's so nice to see you again a very great man of god may the lord bless you amen and as as usual we have um, auntie donna a blessed good morning family of the most high thank you auntie donna we love you and um yeah so just wanted to acknowledge all that before we go on you know i like what you said about trusting um, uh, trusting the one who does not change, the one who is able to provide all of these things. And, and instead of trusting as human beings, um, we make a mistake of placing our hopes and confidence on the gifts and we forget the giver. And so today when we're talking about dropping your crutches, we are actually talking about complete dependency on God. We are talking about celebrating the giver. We are talking about being careful not to elevate these gifts above the giver. You know, one time God helped me to write an article that said, are you, are you trusting on, on your resources or the source? Okay. And so God is the source of all these gifts. And, and we say life is not stable. All these things can come and go. We've seen the storms of life shake these things out of people's lives and and if you if you if you're not trusting god if you're not dependent on god you're going to have a hard time going through life you, you know your our lives for Lucia, should be that god forbid any of these things can be taken at any time and we will not compromise our stand with god any of these things should could be taken and we are not panicking or, or running helter scatter any of these things can be shaken away and, and we will prove that our dependency was on God um, all, all, all this while. And so one thing I'm observing is that when we depend on all this, uh, whether it's our acumen or abilities, our achievements or our assets, um, those things are good. But apart from um, making it an idol, which is not good, it also limits us. Because like we said, there are changing scenes in life. And we've, we've had stories of people who had so much today and tomorrow they didn't have. Or whether it's so much resources, the next day, you know, is a different story. And so and, um, it's very important that we are careful. This is supposed to be like a self-evaluation that as we go through this session, I hope a lot of us are able to reflect and, and to uh, and, and to self-evaluate and say, have I really been trusting in my own reasoning? Have I been trusting in my wisdom? Have I, have I been gaining confidence in my connections? You know, Felicia, we live in a world that says it's who you know that matters. Why that is important, but knowing God is the ultimate connection. Are you trusting in that man who can open doors of opportunities? Because that one can, can be taken away. Life, we've seen people die and go. And, and so, yeah, we have to be careful about these things. And the only way you will know what you've been trusting on is you see the moment and say, God, reveal myself to me. If, if God takes all this, if God takes all these connections that I have, will I crumble? Or if, if suddenly I lose all my money, I have no credit card to depend on, I have no investment, I have nothing, I don't even know where my next meal will come on come from? Am I going to crumble or will I still um, um, trust in God? Felicia, before I, I hand over to you, I have some very, very um, important comments as well. I have this, oh my goodness, from my wonderful mom. Mom, thank you. We love you. My mom is here. She says, um, Felicia, nice to see you. I'm excited to see you. Okay. Today is all about Felicia. Everybody is talking about Felicia. And then from my wonderful children they say so proud of my parents oh we are proud of you guys as well anyway um felicia do you want to take over yes thank you thank you everyone um you were talking about limits uh, so if you think about abraham god had promised him great things mm -hmm. but in himself the best he could come up with was ishmael hmm and God had Isaac in mind for him. So dropping the crutches allows God to maximize our potentials. That's true. That's true. For example, if you think about uh, Esau and Jacob, when Isaac died, Esau was the child that was there. And Isaac had become very great. He had become 
extremely rich and great mm -hmm. in his lifetime. He took all the resources Abraham had and multiplied it. But then Jacob was not even there mm -hmm. when Isaac died. So naturally, mm -hmm. Esau took everything Isaac had. Mm -hmm. Jacob ran away. He had <laughs> only a, a bag that he packed. But he came back loaded. Wow. That is what wow. God can do. That is what God can do. Nothing. I love he that. I nothing. love that. As he was going, God told mm. him, I will go with you and bring yes. you back. He came mm. back it, 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 very rich. Wow. That's that's a classic example. Oh, thank you so much. I love that. And I, what Felicia just brought out is that if you have God, even if the world, even if the devil, even the even if adversities of life take you to zero, God is able to reconstruct everything in your life. Not only is he able to restore and give you more than you had at the beginning, beginning, he's able to do mind uh, blowing things. I like the story you just said now that Jacob left with nothing. And that's true. But when he was coming back, he had wives. He had children, he had cattle, he had riches. He, he had been blessed by God. And, and that's why it's important that we're talking about to, to make God indispensable. Like we said, any of these things that we talked about um, uh, should not be things that are indispensable in our lives. The only thing that should be indispensable is God. And I just wanted to say to the audience, please chime in, put your comments, put your, you know, your contributions and we'll be glad to, to share it as well. We are, we are just having a nice time today. All right. One thing I, I just want to emphasize before we move on to in what we are doing is God, God gave me some things that I would like to share uh, that um, depending on, 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 on ourselves, depending on our abilities, whether it's our, our achievements or our acumen or our uh, assets, they limit you. They put a cap, you know, like you just said, um, uh, Felicia said, that they will not allow you maximize what God has for you. As in, you will never know God's best. If, if you continue depending on yourself, you never know the best version of yourself, of your abilities or whatever that could be if you don't, if you don't allow, allow God. Another thing I observe is that depending on this thing, sometimes so sure it makes for trial and error, okay? Because human beings are limited. We don't see beyond our today. And so there's a lot of mistake we make when we are not leaning on God for direction or depending on God and we are trusting um, our reasoning or we're trusting our logic or we are trusting, you know, whatever we think we have, we make a lot of mistakes and we waste a lot of time. And one other thing is that trusting on all these things we talk about and not depending on God truncates God's intervention in our lives. Okay, it, it, it kind of shortens God's intervention in our lives such that there are certain manifestations you will never see in your life if you do not depend wholly on God. If you not depend wholly on God, um, it helps you. Depending on God completely helps you tap into heaven's resources, and we are going to we are going to talk about that in a while. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Felicia, before we go to the next sector of what we have to say. Yes, uh, it, it, it is very important to go to the one who knows everything. Right. If you think about David, he had fought many battles in his life. Mm -hmm. But one common thread that goes through David's life, he would always ask God, should mm -hmm. I go into this battle? Right. How do you want me to go into this battle? Sometimes God will say, draw them out and ambush them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he will say, when you hear marching in, please. That means my own forces are going ahead to, to fight for you. Yes. And look back to the lives of the children of Israel. When they were at Jericho, they didn't have to shoot anything. God just said, circle the city and shout. When I tell you to shout, mm -hmm. and everything came down. Mm -hmm. And then when they wanted to fight another smaller city called Ai, they just mm -hmm. went there and said, oh, it's a small city. Let's just send a few. No, trust in their logic. And they were yeah. badly defeated. Yes, yeah. It, yeah, everything is about God because it's he's about God. He's wiser, he has plans, and he Hallelujah. To be acknowledged that yes. he is the one. Hmm. Yes. Hallelujah. Amazing. Before I before I run down your points, I'm seeing great comments. Um, um Auntie Donna again said, um, oh Debbie, wow. 
I didn't know it was uh, Stadel. Be amazing. These are wonderful family friends. Good morning, dear brother and sister. So good to see you both. God bless you for talking about this important topic. We love you, Stadel. Uh, God bless you. And then we have um, from my Amen. wonderful friend and classmate, Helen Asama. Helen, it's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. And then we have a wonderful auntie, Auntie Bode. She said, I'm excited and happy to see Felicia. Wow, Felicia, you are the celebrant today. <laughs> amazing thank you all we love you all we love you all uh, all right and so um moving on there are certain areas so we are talking about dependent depending on god there are certain areas i want to highlight for be sure that we should begin to you know when we've done the self-evaluation uh, there are certain areas that i want us to look at that we begin to depend on god you said something very important when you talked about um, asking God for directions, okay? So that's one of the things we are going to talk about. So four areas I want us to start depending on God. We have to depend on God for protection. We have to depend on God for positioning. We have to depend on God for promotions. And we have to depend on God for provisions. Now, when we talk about depending on God for protection, I'm, I'm, I will focus more on direction. And you just talked about it, how the children of Israel went to fight Jericho. They had a plan from God and God helped them conquer that great city. But when they went to fight against Ai, they felt, oh, I, they actually said it is just a, a little city. Let us let us just go. They didn't ask God for for um, direction. But again, there was sin in the cup at, at that time because of Achan, which I don't want to go into. But anyway, they were defeated. And so it's very important that we begin to ask God for directions at every stage. David is a man that loves God. And I observed how many, how much David depended on God. Um, different instances that I won't be able to read, but in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 7 to 8, also in 1 Samuel 23, uh, verses 2 and 4, 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1, and 2 Samuel 15, 19 to 20. At, at different times, you will see David asking the Lord. The Bible will say, and David inquired from the Lord, should I go or I shouldn't go? You know, I observed that and I saw that um, he depended so much on God. And the Bible did say that David, God made him victorious over his enemies. I, I, I all, Most of all the battles, I think all the battles he fought, he, he was victorious because he will always ask God. God. One thing that particularly stood out for me was when David had just come from a battle with his men and his enemies, I don't know if it was the Amalekites or the Philistines, uh, I will confirm, but one of those people came and, and you know set their city on fire, took all their goods, took their wives, took their children, and uh, by the time, sorry? Sorry, said something. Those are the Amalekites. Yeah. Oh, the Amalekites. Okay, thank you, man of God. Anyway, but but by the time by the time David came back, everything was gone, and the Bible said they wept. Men wept. Can you imagine men weeping till there was no more strength in them? But I was surprised in the next verse after the Bible said that David encouraged himself. He said that David inquired of the Lord, "Should I go?" I was reading it. I was like, "Is this not common sense? What is there to inquire?" You have to go fight and take your children and your wife. But the Spirit of God was showing me how much this depend, uh, how much this guy respected and depended on God for direction. So if God had told uh, David, "Do not go," he he probably would not have gone. And and because he asked God and God asked him to go, if you read the, that story, you will see how God provided um, different things on the way to make it easy for him. And that really taught me a lesson. Yeah, chime in, chime in, Felicia. Go ahead. Thank you. Because there are times when God will have you go fight for yourself. There are also times when God will fight for you. Mm -hmm. If, for example, God had told David not to go after those people, God mm -hmm. could have arranged to have his family and everything that was stolen delivered to him. That's right. one way. You know, God always has options. But God wants us to acknowledge that he is sovereign and he is our all in all. When right. we do that, the things God will do for us will surprise us. Because I know. God... It's like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. God can do all sorts of things that you cannot begin to imagine. It's amazing. And we are living, we are living witnesses. 
Right. We are living witnesses. Uh, <clears throat> just before we go, and I want to acknowledge my my dad, the wonderful man of God, he says, imagine how wonderful our lives would be if we ask God's leading in every decision. That is so true. Our mistakes will be minimal. We will be sure we are in God's will. And that's what we are talking about. Thank you so much, Daddy, for chiming in um, with that. That, that is what we are talking about today, that we have to learn to depend on God. Um, there's a lot to say about this topic, but I just want to share a testimony. Um, you know, these past few years, God has taken Felicia and I through a journey. I would have said since the past almost 20 years of our lives, and it's been an interesting journey, but also worthwhile. We've grown spiritually. We've learned from God. I just want to share like a testimony of, of a time that we depended on God and God did uh, something amazing. It was a time that we needed a car and and uh, we needed so badly that we we just were desperate to get something and uh, but the problem is if you live in this side of the world you know that this this system here is ruled by the credit card system and and all of that uh, and so we did not have any of that we were going through a, a phase in life where we've, we we lost everything financially god took away our financial crutches we had no credit cards we had no money coming from we we just had nothing and and here we were, um, by faith, we went to a, a car dealer. We had no credit card. We had nothing. Um, our credit card was so bad. And, and then we went there and told them we wanted a car. I'm, I'm going to make it very short because if I give you the details, we'll, we'll be here for three more hours. But God did an amazing thing. Listen, and um, it, when they looked at it, they said, you know, that we don't even know why you guys are here. Do you realize how, how bad your credit card is? There's no way you will get a car. And, and at a time, Felicia wondered, he said, why do you keep going there? But every morning, I will worship God for two hours I'll get up and go to that car dealer. I didn't know what I was going. They had by this time we we are we, we've been there for like three months. Our file has gone from one desk to the other. Every every manager that takes him will look at it and say, No, I can't deal with these people. They are not credit worthy. There's no way they can get a car. And somebody somebody will say, Okay, pass it to me. Let me try. But one good thing that God did is that they were not quick to close our file. They they were passing it from one table to the other, and that was God in action. And and so um, this to cut the long story short, this this um, this file eventually got to the table of of a wonderful white woman. She didn't know us, but I you know God God can touch the heart of people to work for you. This woman decided that she was going to fight for us. And she fought and fought and fought. Every day we resume with them. You would think we're staff in that place. We just sit down and at the end of the day, we'll come home, we'll worship God, we'll go the next day. I don't even know. If you look at it, we're not trusting in our wisdom because God said, keep going there. If, if I were to look at it logically, I was like, what, what are we expecting? Like the credit card is so bad. There's no need going there. There's no way you will get a car. But you know, we continue going. And this woman fought for us to get a car. She contacted all the financial institutions she knew in different states and everywhere. And at a time, they, they asked her, they said, are you sure of what you're doing? Because you know that these people, their credit cards are really very bad. And that it's like we are opening our eyes and walking into fire. And she said, I don't know what, but I believe they are good people. And I believe we should help them. Help them. And this was God. And, and finally, the financial institutions were not going to respond to her and she literally fought with them and they said okay we'll put your job on the line you put your job on the line we give these people this car but you know they cannot pay for it and if anything happens you lose your job she was a manager she said so be it i cried when i heard this testimony because this is a woman that doesn't know us she's a white and we are black she has no history she just called us into her office and said what happened I know you guys are good people, but your finance is so bad that nobody will even come close to, to giving you guys a car. What happened? And we related our story, the, the wilderness experience and the things we've been through. And, and she said, congratulations, you have the car. I could not believe it. Like I just broke down and I was crying in her office. This was a miracle that has never happened. And she kept on saying, I don't know why I'm doing this. I've never done this before. I don't know you guys, but I just feel like I need to help you. My job is on the line here. And she started begging us, please don't default in your payment because this is me giving away my job. Like if anything happens, I've lost my job. I was like, wow. And then she now said, oh, you have to put down, uh, was it $4,000 or something? 
uh, as um, as a down payment for you to take the car. And we did not, to say the truth, we did not even have hundred dollars. I'm not ashamed to say it here because we are people who have tried God. We have tested God in the wilderness, like the children of Israel. We have seen God move. We have seen God do great things. Uh, the Bible says that the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness. Their clothes did not grow old. God kept them. We are living testimonies. I have proved God. And I can tell you that God is real. Please pardon me if I'm crying, but I'm a woman who has received so much from God. God has done great things. I cannot even begin to say all. And so when they say, bring the money, <laughs> I said, I don't even, I don't even have a hundred dollars. And that was another journey. We started for another one month. And you know what happened? Let me just call this long story short. At the end of the day, the car dealers paid the $4,000 down payment hallelujah can somebody say hallelujah have you ever i have never heard of it in this side of the world where the people that are giving you the cars will be the one to pay the down payment i could not believe it till today when i share testimonies people will be like how i remember i had an auntie then here in canada when i shared the testimony with her she was screaming but after 10 minutes of screaming she said wait i don't understand the like what do you mean they paid it? I said, they paid it. She said, no, no. Then after a while, she will praise God. Dance. Then she said, please, can you explain? Like, I don't understand it. Who paid it? I said, the car dealers paid it. She said, how can they pay it? I, but they paid it till today. They did. And so, Felicia, I could go on and on, but I just want to stop and let uh, Felicia rhyme in, uh, chime in here. Go ahead, Felicia. Well, there's not a lot more to say. God paid it. That was hmm. God. God. Hallelujah. That's, Amen. that's what it boiled down to. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the, at the end of the day, you cannot be broke if you have God. Ah. You know, one time ah. Jesus was ah. asking ah. his ah. disciples, he said, when I sent you out two by two, hmm. and hmm. I told you not to take any money with you, did hmm. you lack for anything? So, because you have, if you have God, you have everything you need. That's true. Everything you need. Hallelujah. Is, is in God. God is everything. The totality Hallelujah. of needs is Amen. in God. Yes, Hallelujah. God doesn't come down. He will use human beings. In those cases, mm. in that case, he used the dealer. Hallelujah. But even if, if, it, if it was not the dealer, God has answers. He <laughs> has answers. Always. Hallelujah. Every Hallelujah. Time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to take a moment and acknowledge some of my wonderful sisters here, Sister Nafia, and I think that's Sister Nana. Sister Nana, a wonderful woman of God, a powerful woman of God. It's such a blessing to have you here. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And she said something here as well. Sister Nana said, um, she said, oh, that's okay. Um, I, okay, no, this is what I was okay. Wow, comments are coming in very, very fast. Uh, yeah, it says a uh, powerful testimony. Thank you, it's amazing. And then, so when we talk about God's, um, I'm just going to move faster here. When we talk about God's protection and 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 positioning, um, 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 um provisions and promotion, I want to horn on the provisions again, uh, uh, because um, God does amazing things. And that's what we are saying. If you depend on God, you tap into heaven's resources. When you depend on God, you tap in into God's intelligence. When you depend on God, you tap into God's abilities. And what can be better than that? I, I tell you, I I'm reminded of the story of the children of Israel in the wilderness. It blows my mind when God provided manna for them. We are talking about at least a million people. The Bible says that there were 600,000 men, uh, you know, aside men and women. And so we know that women and children are always more. So we are talking about over a million people in the wilderness. We need to think about this a little bit. The wilderness is a dry place. The wilderness is a barren land. There are no streams in the wilderness. There are no shops in the wilderness. There is, there is nothing in the wilderness. And God is making a statement to us here. If God had provided these things for the children of Israel in Egypt, we say, oh yeah, uh, they, they are sharing from the economy of Egypt, but God brought them out. God said, I will bring you out so that I can display my glory. I will bring you out so that I can show you my power. I will bring you out so that I can, I can show you what I can do. And the Bible says that God provided manna for them, not for one day, not for two years, 40 years. 
40 years. It was when they stepped in the book of Joshua, when they just stepped into the promised land, the manna sees them like Maka, Bakesh, Ete. What a wonderful God. Every morning, manna will fall from heaven. The Bible said it was like waffles and it was sweet like honey. I'm like, oh my goodness, God has a sweet tooth. I love that. And I believe that that manna had all the nutrients they needed and it fed over a million people for 40 years. It did not fail for one day. So what is it that you're looking to God to provide for you? If God can provide for a million people, how much more will he provide? I'm telling you that our needs are too little compared to this God. I have proved God in the wilderness and I can tell you that I know certain aspects of God that I will not have known. He provides in the wilderness. He preserves you. In fact, he doesn't allow smoke. He doesn't allow you smell like fire. You don't look, you won't look like what you have been through because God is with you. He will preserve you. He will preserve your health. He will preserve everything. And so, Felicia, can you chime in on these wonderful provisions of God? Wonderful provisions of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hmm. One, one of my Bible teachers I listen to on the TV, uh, Andrew Womack, right now is teaching about don't limit God. Wow. And he always refers to Psalm 78, verse 41, mm -hmm. that talks about how the children of Israel limited the Holy One of, of, of Israel. Mm. Because at, at a stage in that wilderness, mm. the children of Israel said, we want meat. We are tired of this manna. Mm -hmm. And they were saying it because they felt, okay, we are in a place where there cannot be enough meat for all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God proved it to them that you are limiting me. You, you are underestimating me. <laughs> God just brought wind and blew millions of birds hmm. into Hallelujah. their camp. Yes. They ate so much that it became a problem for them. Right, so right. The, the real challenge for us human beings is we limit God. We do. And so do. That, that that is what all these crutches they amount do. to. And right. we said something earlier on that when you put your own aside, mm -hmm. you tap into God's. Everything That's you've true. mentioned, acumen, yeah. abilities, yeah. achievements, mm -hmm. assets, Mm -hmm. If you can set yours aside, you tap into God's own, which is hmm. more than yours, right. way more than be, beyond your imagination. Hmm. And if you allow him, he can do amazing things. Hallelujah. And he will do, not even he can. He, he will, will do amazing things. He will things. do. He will do. So many testimonies we could share here, but we are moving on. Uh, so I just want us to end with uh, depending on God for pro promotions. And I want to focus on the story of, of Joseph. When we talk about depending on God for promotion, Joseph, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I'm just going to start from, you know, we know that he was in the dungeon. He was there for something he did not do. And he, he was so, if you if you think about Joseph's life at that time, he was like he was abandoned. You know, in the in society had passed him by you know people have passed him by he i'm sure all he had in all his prayers could be god could you get me out of this place he was not even thinking about his dreams anymore he was not thinking about um how to be great. He, he was just thinking of how he'll be free. But God had a plan. And at the fullness of time, you know, this God is amazing. When you depend on God, it amazes me how God, you know, controls situations and things. That he's like a master chess player. He moves this here. He moves that here. He moves that. Sometimes you might not understand what he's doing at the moment, but God has a plan and he has something great in mind. Wait till the end. Sometimes God does not make sense in the middle of our lives. But I tell you, if you can wait till the end, you see that all this while that God was moving this, moving this, moving that, he was He was setting you up for a great promotion. And so the king, God, I'm sure it was God that made the king have that dream. The king had that dream and nobody could interpret it. It was time to promote Joseph. And I can, I can picture when, when the king sent for Joseph and they went to bring Joseph from the bible said he just cleaned up and and he came and, and, and he did not know that this was the day that god was going to crown him and when, and when the king narrated everything and joseph gave his response the next thing the same god that made the king dream the same god that asked the king to call joseph was the same god that put it in the heart of joseph and i'm sorry that put it in the heart of the king and the king said where else can we get a man like this as from today you become less to me 
and immediately Joseph was watching his world unfold and, and they removed the robe, the prison robe, and they put on him uh, a kingly robe and they removed the chains that were holding him and they put on him the, a chain. Oh my goodness. The next thing, Joseph was in the palace above Potiphar that put him there. Look at what God can do. When you trust God's tactics and you trust his timing, I'm telling you, God will move the heavens and earth for you. I'm telling you, if, if we continue to depend on these things, I'm not saying those things are not good, but if we continue to make them number one, we limit ourselves because God wants to do far more ab exceedingly abundantly than we can think or dream. Polisha, please chime in here. Please chime in here. Take it away, man of God. Take it away. Thank you so much. Marty Mordecai hmm. was at the gate hmm. of the king. Ayabaka, my favorite story. He was a slave hmm. that had been conquered. Yes. There, there is no reason why hmm. Mordecai should replace Haman. Hmm. All Mordecai probably was asking when they were praying and fasting, they were just praying, deliver us from Haman and hmm. his plans to kill and wipe us out. Yeah, yeah. Who knew? except God, mm. that God was able to take Mordecai from the gates and put him right there in the palace wow. where Haman used to sit. Ah, God does amazing Yes. God is greater, is wiser, is more powerful, mm. and he overrides the rules and the protocols of mm. different societies and that is it. situations yep. where he chooses to. Where he chooses. There is no reason. Uh, mm. If Haman was removed, he, he didn't have to pick Mordecai. There were many other nobles in that mm. area that could have been mm. chosen. Mm. In the same way mm. Joseph was selected. Mm. But that is God at mm. work. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, I love that story. You know, uh, and Haman, I, I, Haman was scheming and scheming and scheming, but thank God. I'm telling you that God is the only thing we need. Most times we are focusing on all this, our connections and all that. One time I was praying and, and I was saying, God, I need connections. I, I think it had to do with um, something in my career. And I was praying. You know what God told me? God says, you, I am all the connection you need. He says, I'm the connection of the connection. I rule in the affairs of men. I, hold, I, I, I move your hearts here and there. And God can cause even your enemies. Didn't the Bible says that if a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. And so if you have, we, let's just look to be in good standing with God. Let's just lift this God above these gifts he's giving us. Let's make him indispensable in our lives. Let's, let's let him know that he is our idol. And I tell you, everything will flow from there. Everything. Look at the classic story you brought about, about Modica. A man that was plotting for them, didn't know he was digging his own grave. And you know the way God works, God allowed Haman to, <laughs> he gave him a long rope. He allowed Haman to dig that grave till the end. And when the thing was ready, you know, it was as if God said, okay, Haman, now you go into the grave, you prepared. And that's the God we serve. And that's the God we serve. So I just want to round up by saying that Excuse me. When we depend on God, you you activate the supernatural. You bring in the supernatural, whether in in your in your provision or protection or in anything that you have. You activate the supernatural. When you trust God, you you provoke unusual testimonies. I tell you, in this case that we talked about the car, nobody will ever give you a car in this place like that. Nobody. Till today, I still don't know what happened. I still don't know what happened. You know, this is what God can do. You know, when you trust God, he begins to show you things that are unprecedented, like the children of Israel at the Red Sea. Because uh, Moses trusted God, God said, straight the road. Who would have known that the sea is able to part? So when you trust God, he brings unusual testimonies. It activates the supernatural. You see dimensions of God that you have never known before. When you trust God, like I said, he brings uncommon blessings. And, and and not only on common blessings, it, like I said before, it helps you tap into heaven's resources. It activates God's mercy and intervention in your life when you trust God. And the last one is that when you trust God, it pleases God. It pleases him. It elevates him. And, and uh, Felicia, can you say the final word before I pray for us here? Uh, the, the only thing I will say is when God tells you something, Run with it. 
Hallelujah. Most times as human beings, we look at ourselves, you mm -hmm. know, at all those things we talk about, we look yes, at our yes. acumen, yes. our mm -hmm. abilities, our achievements, mm -hmm. our assets, mm -hmm. and we say, mm -hmm. how can mm -hmm. it be? Mm -hmm. But if God says something, you have to realize that God knows more than we do. That's true. And he can do everything he says. And Hallelujah. He will follow through on anything he says. Amen. And the only thing that will sometimes stop God is unbelief. Mm. So we should be very careful. If God has told you something, just run with it. Hallelujah. If everybody says it's not possible, you should get them. Be like, be like the Shonamite woman who was mm. looking for help for her dead son. Right. She just refused to listen to anybody. She refused she to listen. Focusing on getting to the man of God. Yep. Yeah. What? Just say this is what God told me, and that's all I. That's all I believe. Hallelujah. God, authority. Hallelujah. Because in ourselves, we cannot do a lot. Gideon, mm. who, who knew Gideon could conquer the Midianites? He was the Midianites, hiding. They used to descend like locusts. And he up their crops yeah. and all that. And God looked at him and said, Mighty man of hey, valor. You man of valor. Hallelujah. Gideon, me? Are you looking for somebody else? No. I'm hiding. Hallelujah. Threshing wheat mm. when pressed in the ground. God said, yes, you. I didn't. I know what I'm talking about. You. Hallelujah. That is God. Hallelujah. And that's so amazing. And one way I just want to end this um, before I so many comments I'm, I would like to share here. But what, I just want to end this by saying it, everything we have, all of our achievements, all of our ac uh, accents, our our intelligence, our reasoning, our resources. If you put all together minus God, is equals to zero. Okay, but come empty. Let's even say you have no intelligence, you have no achievement, you no, you are not even educated. Look at the disciples of Jesus; they were not educated. Most of them were fishers and all of that. But look at how God used them to turn the world upside down. So, if you even if you don't have anything, you have no education, you have no money, you have no connection, nobody knows you, have nothing going for you. But if you have God with you, oh my goodness, the world is your limit. The sky, sorry, not the world. The sky is not even a limit. The sky is not even a limit. And that's what we are talking about today, uh, being careful to, to depend on God 100%. Um, I like what Delight Favor shares here. She said, we are representers of God's glory. So he uses our wilderness express to show forth himself. That is true. That is amazing. Thank you for saying that. And um, Antibode says here, at God's own time, everything will fall into place. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. And I have um, um, uh, and, uh, Stanana here saying, depend on the, de I love that. Depend on the dependable God. He is dependable. Amen. He is reliable. Hallelujah. And Auntie Donna said, uh, amen. Oh, <laughs> this is amazing. Wow. So many, so many comments here. I'm so blessed here. Um, and um my mom says, this is such a blessing. Let's go and let's go. Hallelujah. And um, Sister Debbie here says, some who do not know how mighty God is, said, I will have to learn to live with an illness. But God, with the prayers of his children, he healed me. Hallelujah. Woo! I have to hear this testimony. I have to hear this testimony. Oh, my goodness. This is an amazing testimony. And uh, Sister Nana here says, wrong with what God tells you. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Nana. We can't go wrong with that. The world might mock you. The world might not understand. But God is looking for your obedience. He's looking for your, for your commitment in what he has told you. And he will do the rest. Oh, my goodness. I'm having such a wonderful time here today. I just want to take time to thank everybody who came. Before we go, I just want to pray. I, I want to pray for us. Um, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, what an awesome privilege we have to learn at your feet. Oh my God, we are so blessed today. We are so excited because we feel your presence around. We are thankful for what you are doing in each and every life here. We know that we are living testimonies in the things that we have been through, God, and we give you all the glory today. Thank you for bringing this blessing that we should Amen. depend on you and not depend on and all these gifts that you have given us. Father, we pray for grace today not to elevate the things you have given us above your place in our life. We 
tear down every idol. For adventure there are that we don't even know about. We might be trusting in our acumen. We might be trusting in our resources. We might be trusting in our abilities, our achievements. We might be trusting, oh God, in our connections. Oh, I know this. I know that. Uh, Father, today we drop every crutch, oh God, that we are holding. All the crutches. We drop it today, oh God, and we say Amen. we are going to make you indispensable in our Amen. lives. We are going to trust you. We are going to be dependent on you Amen. because we know that when we depend on you, you begin to open doors that we blow our mind. That when we depend on you, oh God, nothing can stop us. When we depend on you, we enter into the realm of endless possibilities. When we depend on you, we allow you to show up and show forth through our lives. Sir. Father, we give you the glory. Give us the grace everywhere, oh God. After this session and when we are gone, begin to unveil ourselves to us. Begin to show us how we have depended on different things and help us to repent. And as from today, give us the grace, oh God, to depend on you and give us the grace to keep, oh God, tapping into your resources. Thank you, Lord. We leave this studio today with your blessings, uh, with your presence, and with your power to go and be vessels of honor unto you. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And everybody says amen. Please type your amen. Type your amen. What a wonderful time we had today. I am blessed. I tell you, so much to be said, but we have gone uh, over and beyond our time limit. Thank you, um, Asama Heli, so much for chiming in. Thank you, uh, Tina now, Sister Debbie, thank you, my wonderful mom, thank you, Daddy Agachi, my wonderful dad, thank you, Auntie Donna, thank you, um, everybody that came today. I can, uh, Shelly Granum, thank you, uh, Premier Wilfred, thank you so much. It's such a blessing to have you guys. I hope you guys were blessed. We have been blessed. Thank you, may God bless you. And somebody else, Benjamin Oladakbo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. We are so thankful. I hope you were blessed. You guys have been such a blessing to us. Felicia, what can I say? A wonderful man of God. My husband that I'm proud of. God has been so good to us. We've walked a journey of um, an experience with God, but a journey of greatness. Thank you for sticking with it. And thank you for standing up for God. Thank you for coming today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you everybody. This ends our broadcast, and we'll see you next week. Again, we are here next week, eleven uh, a.m. Next week, I can't remember. Oh, it's a, going to be a wonderful topic. I'm not going to reveal it. Come and be blessed again. We love you. God bless. Bye bye. Amen. Bye everybody. Bye.